this is my first video. I've got absolutely no idea how many of these I'll do, um, or really what the point of them is, but I just thought it might be fun. Um, I kind of got it into my head that at some point in the future I want to cook a whole hog on a homemade pit. So I thought maybe just made, make a series of, of vlogs up until that actually happens. So I'm starting today with my first sort of like proper training camp, going to do a brisket through the night. So I thought I'd make a video about that. In terms of what I've, in terms of what I'm doing for the recipe, well, I've, I kind of went through a lot of my books, picking out the, picking out the elements that I sort of like sounded familiar or I like the sound of, um, and that um, seemed like they were going to give me the best chance of. of getting a successful successful return basically because brisket's notoriously a little bit of a tricky cut to, to cook. So the rubber musings come out of the Weber um, Weber's complete guide to barbecue smoking. Um, that the requirement to inject and also the um, the 12 to 24 hour marinade, the idea for that came out from that book. Um, the actual injection I'm using though, that's coming from Dr. Barbecue's Slow Fire book. Um, it's the competition injection, the, the logic basically being that whenever you're doing competition barbecue, the judges are only going to be taking one or two bites, so you need to make sure that that bite is as good as possible, so they use a slightly more elaborate injection. Um, then the grill stock book, so grill stock's a joint down in Bristol, um, it's actually Dr. Barbecue Ray Lampo, he's actually been heavily involved with those guys as well. So there's a there's a little bit of crossover, but um, in terms of what I got out from here was adding a bit of extra liquid when it actually goes into the when it goes into the crutch. That's what I'm going to be using from that. And then finally the Reds Let There Be Meat book. Um, Again, this is talking about wrapping for up to 24, um, marinating for up to 24 hours, but also wrapping it in cling film when you marinate it to lock in the moisture, and then adding some Worcester sauce to the spritz as well during the cooking process. So yeah, that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing, and then I'm going to be vlogging the uh, what actually goes on this evening, and you'll be able to see how that all works out. So we've got about three and a half kilos of uh, brisket here, just the flat. If you come in and have a little bit of a closer look. So you can see at the moment where it's all marbled, quite sinewy, a lot of fat on there. So that's basically why we're going to be cooking it low and slow, trying to hit that sweet spot basically where all of that connective tissue and fat starts to break down but doesn't leave the meat entirely and, and leaving us with a dry cut. So I'm going to be doing as much as I can to try and get as close to achieving that process as possible. So I've read a little bit about using an injection. <clears throat> so we're going to be using an injection which I got out of the slow fire Dr. Barbecue Ray Lampe book. So it's basically 500 mil of beef stock, uh, 60 mil of Worcester sauce, onion granules, garlic granules, and cayenne pepper. So just trying to inject a lot of liquid into the meat just to try and um, retain a bit of moisture. And then I've got a, using a rub out of the Weber Complete Barbecue Smoking book, which is basically chili powder, brown sugar, onion powder, garlic powder, pepper, salt, a um, little bit of cumin in there as well, I think. So we'll see how that goes. Right, so I'm now going to um, put the injection liquid into the into the brisket. Um, I think basically what I've read about is almost imagine sort of like a two and a half, two and a half centimetre squares, like a, lat a, a lattice board matrix over the meat and be injecting in every two and a half centimetre square. Um, I think also that you're meant to inject running parallel to the grain from a slightly as, as horizontal as you can. So I've just sucked up the liquid into the into the injector. I'm going to go in, going in. There we go. And now injecting in. You can see as the meat starts to plump up, you see that meat rising as the liquid goes in. And let's go out and then go again running parallel, whoa, in we go, you can really see that meat plumping up. Finish the injection and if you come and have a bit of a close look at the meat you can see hopefully how it's all plumped up a bit because a lot of that liquid's inside there now. I'm going to, all of the loose liquid I'm going to be, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a cow, I'm going to be saving all of this excess liquid though because we're going to be putting that when I 
when I crutch it at about 70 degrees later on later on tonight but we'll talk through that step when we get there so what I need to do now is take it out dry it off and then I'm going to rub it English mustard all over yeah. so let's just take that off yeah. get this onto here yeah. and we're just going to dry it off a little bit with the kitchen towel so the rub starts to stick to it next step five tablespoons of English mustard just smeared all over. So I'm gonna do about two and a half on each side. So let's get this going. I think there's no other option but to get my hands in there a bit. So just English mustard smeared all over. And make sure we get the ends as well. Now let's flip it. Uh, I don't want to eat that. You don't need to eat it until it's cooked. Not, not. guy looking good next step we're going to make once we've got all of this mustard on is get that rub on there so actually forming a little bit of a little bit of a paste and I mean I've read a lot about when you should apply the rub how long you need to let it marinate for some stuff talks about an hour before other stuff up to about 24 hours so hopefully this will be something in the region of about 12 to 14 hours and then and then we'll see how that goes so all the mustard's on and now we'll get the rub on as well. Tire rub's now gone onto the brisket. Uh, I've wrapped it five or six times with cling film as well, just to keep the moisture in there and to keep the rub in place. And they're gonna stick this in the pan. And now that's just gonna sit there for about 12 hours in the fridge. Worth noting as well, we've got about 200 mil of the injection left. So there's about 360 mil that's inside the meat at the moment those volumes i had of 560 in total that was for about a six to seven kilo brisket so fairly happy with the amount of moisture that's been locked into there so hopefully that will that will work out well when it goes on this evening okay so it's just coming up to nine o'clock i'll be taking the, uh, the brisket out of the fridge shortly um giving it about three hours to get it up to ambient temperature inside not outside it's quite cold um and it'll be going on about midnight so here's my setup so if you just want to come over have a quick look at this so we're going to be smoking far right corner on the uh, pro q frontier so we're going to be going with the minion method so i'm going to fill up the charcoal basket with unlit charcoal going to use the chimney starter that's on the weber kettle at the moment um, about three quarters full chimney onto the bottom of the pro q then going to put on the main chamber water bath in the bottom section grill's going to sit on the top then the the meat will sit on there i'll put in some probe thermometers as well i'm going to be smoking with mesquite i've got about eight handfuls of mesquite wood chips in here so i'll get those on to soak shortly when i take the meat out huge bag of uh big k restaurant grade um they love me at the tfc because if you're not careful you can end up with a bag of dust so you want to make sure that you search around and give give the bags a good feel to make sure you get the good stuff and then two bags of logs um once i've lit the pro q they'll be going on the weber mainly as a heat source but i might experiment a little bit with um using some of the embers just for added added fuels through the night but we'll see how we go on the kettle we've got a chimney starter full with lump wood all the way to the top so i'll be lighting that in a couple of hours and then in the bottom of the frontier in the charcoal basket that's a full chimney starter's worth of lump wood unlit that I'm going to be pouring the lit charcoal onto the idea being obviously is the lit burns through to the unlit that catches and the fire lasts slightly longer top vent is going to be completely open bottom vents are all running going to be running at, um, about halfway open got the wood chip soaking now as well and hopefully you can just about see that water pan is full to about three quarters um last thing you want to do is have a full water pan and then as you're lifting it on spill it all over the fire the meat's now out the fridge it's been out for about 20 minutes so still about two hours 40 till it's gonna go on um still feeling pretty cold at the moment but that should start to warm up slightly um just gone through my um temperature checks on my thermometer um the maverick et triple three i think something like that um, basically um, twin probe uh, receiving unit um, on the right hand side and then the transmitting unit on the left um, left hand side one on a little butterfly clip that will sit on the grill 
Um, so if you look at the um, on the receiver, so the so the grill is in um, probe two at the moment. So I've got alarm set at a low of 93 and a high of 121. So that's where I'm going to be trying to keep it within the range. Um, one is going to be stuck into the meat itself, so that's set at 71. So that's the that's the temperature at which I want to take the beef off and crutch it. Um, and then yeah, a pack of uh, a pack of neck oil, some after eights bottle of bullet, bottle of Woodford Reserve and some leftover uh, Christmas port as well to get me through the night. Um, just looked at the forecast as well. Um, it's going to be about two degrees, but 2% chance of rain, which is the important thing and only six mile an hour winds as well. So pretty good conditions. If I can get the temperature right, then should be able to get it to sit there quite nicely. Um, it's just gone 11.15. So I've just lit the, um, the chimney starter just to get the first full batch of charcoal up and running I reckon that'll be about half an hour when that's all burning through and all the all the charcoal in that chimney's lit then I'll be sticking it on top of the unlit stuff um, putting the building the building the smoker back up together and start trying to get the the whole the whole smoker to temperature okay so it's all burning through nicely now so we're going to get this stick it onto the unlit on the pro cube there we go Okay, so I've just rebuilt the whole smoker, so I've put the two main units back on. Um, water pans down here in this bottom unit. Then we've got a grill just sat up here. We've got some gasket tape here as well, actually, which is acting quite nicely, so you don't see too much smoke coming out of there, not too many leaks, which is good. Um, and the dome's on. Then we've got a probe thermometer. Um, that's what we're reading at the moment, so probe two is on five degrees and the one that's on the cooker is on 106 at the moment so that's that's looking quite nice okay so i've just quickly come back inside um if you want to unwrap the beef i've got a little water and um, worcester sauce spritz that i'm going to put on that as well before it goes on um just keeping an eye on the temperature as well with the receiver so um about 107 on the top deck at the moment which is pretty good because i think once we put the wet wood chips on and that's going to drop down a bit the meat will pull the temperature down a bit as well so if we can get that up to about 110 ish then i think i'll um i think i'll put it on then now i'm just going to give it a spritz like i said earlier just wanting to do whatever i can to try and give it the best chance possible basically to not dry out <coughs> Cool. I'm going to go with that. Okay, so I've just put on two handfuls of the mesquite wood chips now. Um, so it's starting to smoke, smoke up quite not quite nicely. I'll flip the camera in a sec just so you can see what's going on. Um, and yeah, the temperature's at about 105. So I'm just going to, as the wood chips are wet, I'm just going to let them sit on the fire for a bit just to see what happens to the temperature. Uh, time is two minutes past midnight. So pretty much got it on bang on time as I wanted to. Um, you can see that the smoke's nicely pluming out of the fully open vent at the top there. Um, so the brisket's now on. I've um, got the second probe in there as well now running to the unit. Just have a look at the temperatures. So obviously you lose a lot of heat off the cooker when you take the lid off. Um, they reckon you lose about, I think it's like 15 minutes added to your cook each time you effectively take a look. Um, the meat's at 16 degrees at the moment. Um, so it actually came up nicely to, to ambient temperature more or less, which is good. So it was out of the fridge for three hours before it went on. So you don't want to shock the meat by then suddenly um, going from refrigerated cold straight onto the hot grill. Um, temperature's up to 97, so pretty happy with that. Um, so basically all that, all that I'm going to do now is um, looking to add more wood at hours 1, 2 and 3. Um, and then waiting for it to hit 70 degrees Celsius internal temperature on the meat. And then I'll take it off and crutch it at that point. So just coming up to about two hours in, um, I'll be putting the second, no, third lot of chips on shortly. Um, put some on obviously at the start, at 1am, coming up to 2am now, so I'll be putting on the next the next set. Um, got a little fire going now as well, just to keep warm, the temperature's dropped a little bit. Um, you see there's still nice plume of smoke coming out of the cooker as well, so that's, that's all looking good. Um, Grill temperatures at 106, meat's currently at 63, so 
so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that works out because it obviously rose pretty quickly and um, starting to flatten out a little bit now. My plan was to um, take it out and wrap it at 70, but um, I might have a look at what the time, what kind of times elapsed by them as well. This cart's about uh, 2.45am. It's proper cold now. Um, temperature of the beast just hit 70. Um, cooker temperature's at 108. 107 on the grill um, I do a little bit more smoke in 10 minutes so I think I'm just gonna put a few more chips on then um, probably take it through to about 330 and bring it off just at just over 70 because I think it's gonna stall at about 70 now anyway and I wouldn't mind just getting the last bit of smoke flavor into it uh, it's just gone 3 a.m. Uh, I've put the last load of wood chips on there now um, yeah, temperature of the beast well and truly stalled at 70. Um, hasn't shifted for about 15 minutes. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to give it about half an hour more in the smoke. Probably won't shift much more from there, I don't think. And then when I take it off, wrap it, crutch it and try and take it through to 90 after that. Okay, so it is now 3.30, um, still at 70 degrees. So I'm going to take it off. And try and take it off one-handed. Um, I'm going to get it wrapped up. Okay. There we go. Let's go wrap it up. So I'm going to give it a bit of a split with the um, whiskey sauce and water, just to make sure that stays nice and moist. Cool. Um, I've got about 100 mil of the injection, um, of the injection left as well. So I'm just going to pour that into the bottom of this foil. Again, just keep a little bit of moisture in there. As we wrap it up. And then the final thing I've got is um, I took another 100 mil of the injection that was left over because we had 200 left in total. Um, I'll soak some baking paper in that and I'm going to wrap wrap that around the brisket as well. Um, something I've done when I'm just cooking Sunday roast before um, and I saw it mentioned I think in um, I think on the Weber like the Weber brisket web page recipe I think but um, sounded familiar so I'm going to give that a go as well. Cool so I'm just going to wrap this up tightly big um, brisket wrapped in the kitchen paper and then I'll turn that into a tightly wrapped foil parcel then that'll go back on the barbecue. So it's about 6.45. Um, spent the last, what, two and a half or so hours, two, two hours 45, just sort of like dozing on and off. Uh, set my alarm uh, initially for like after an hour and a quarter and then every half an hour just keep an eye on the pictures. Um, the meat's at 79 at the moment, the fire's at 107. Um, we are approaching about coming up to seven hours of the fire, um, the original the original fire though, so I'm just a little bit concerned that I don't want that to start dropping too too quickly. Um, so I'll probably give it another 15, 20 minutes and then get a little bit more charcoal lit or see if we've got any of the embers left and just try and make sure that there's enough fuel just to just to pull it through. Sun rising over London. Um, got the fire lit again. You can see, actually, just worth noticing as well, it was a little bit frosty during the night, hence why I've got a couple of hours sleep inside in the end. Um, yeah, got the fire lit again. Um, meat's at 81, grills at about 108. Um, they were coming up to like seven and a half hours off that, off that first light now, so I'm gonna. Um, stick a little bit more wood un underneath to see if I can raise it up to just like low 110s maybe 115 something like that just to get the temperature up a little bit and first coffee of the morning I <laughs> think there's gonna be a few I'm feeling pretty tired um, meat to 82 I've got some more charcoal on there now as well fires at 112 so looking pretty good eight degrees to go I'm gonna take it off at 90 degrees um, check its tenderness and then it'll rest for a few hours so 
just be interesting to see how long these final eight degrees take. Could be, could still be another couple of hours, I think. But we'll see how we go. Beef's just hit 90. Um, had to put the odd extra little bit of um, <coughs> lit wood just on, just to keep it ticking over at about 110. Um, it's just gone 10 past nine, so it's about nine hours, 10 minutes in total. I'm just going to take the lid off and stick the probe thermometer in just to take a few other readings to see um, what that looks like as well. Um, it's going to be a little bit haphazard, but let's just see what they come in at. Okay, 97.6. Let's go in on the side down here. Oh, that, that felt very tender. Uh, let's go down it. Yeah, that's feeling really tender. 92.5. And 96. So what I've got here is a cool box. I've got some food and farmer grade um, insulation wool that I've got a piece in the bottom at the moment. I'll stick another bit over the top. Three tea towels that I'm going to wrap it up in. So I'm going to take the <clears throat> I take the brisket off, wrap it in the tea towels, then stick it into the cool box. Put the lamb and um, the wool over the top of it. The other um, wool insulation over the top of that tight it down and pack it down tight and then it will rest for I think probably about three hours because that will take us to just after midday. So it's wrapped up inside the tea towels, um, inside the cool box, so we're just going to stick this extra layer of insulation over the top, get the lid back on and it's going to rest like that now for about three hours. It's 11.59, so it's been resting for just under three hours. So we're now gonna basically take it out and see what we ended up with. So I'm just taking off all of the insulation. That's nice and warm, that's a good sign. Okay, here we go. You don't need to film the floor. No one's worried about the floor. Oh, no, it's just oh my god, it's still so hot. Jesus, burning me. Oh, after three hours, that's crazy. Right, here we go. Come in here. I can't believe it's still so hot after that amount of time. this side room. Smells nice. Oh wow. That looks good. Nice smoke ring. You can see all the smoke ring there. Let's just dip that in the juice. Okay. Moment of truth. Against the grain. I've just cut a little bit more off so we can have a bit of a closer look so you can see really happy with that smoke ring around the outside it's got a nice lovely nice water to it as well that's sort of like that buttery texture so really happy with how that's coming out the, the bark's obviously soft it's always going to be and wrapping it like that um so yeah just nothing left but to enjoy it now really happy with this you can see a nice pink smoke ring around the outside all the cuts coming off really nice and thin, getting these almost wafer thin. I mean, they're going to be fantastic in sandwiches, cold as well. Now I've had, now I've had all the, the hot stuff that I want. Maybe some nachos and chili, whatever. It's just going to be 
more use from here on in. Um, interesting as well, this is where a little fat cap sat so you can see where the smoke didn't penetrate through to here because it had that barrier of fat to get through and a few dark patches as well where the, uh, where the injection was seaming through as well which is quite interesting to see as the final, as the final cut but yeah, really happy with that. Um, if anyone's interested let me know, I'll show you the exact instructions I use as I said at the outset just a case of taking a um, number of different recipes and the elements that I thought would work, were going to work really well just giving the best chance to retain as much moisture as possible but yeah really happy with that um, not a bad first effort I think anyway thanks for watching and don't forget to like share and subscribe <laughs>